virtual reality, or VR, has been a new, exciting type of technology that has been gaining momentum in the entertainment industry, especially in gaming. People are fascinated with the idea of being whisked off into a 3D world, one which has no limits to our imagination. Today, VR incorporates four out of five of our senses. Touch, hearing, seeing, and sometimes even smell. With VR, we can explore a whole new world from the comfort of our homes, like exploring a jungle on a quest to avenge your father's death, or even fighting off robots in a futuristic world. VR's most common purpose today is for gaming. But imagine if we could use this technology for good. Today, I'm going to share with you how we can use VR to treat phantom limb pain. <laughs> Currently, 1.9 million people are living in the United States with limb loss and a total of 507 people lose a limb every day. Why so many? This can happen to anyone, from veterans to manufacturing and car accidents, and even serious infections and frostbite can lead to amputations. This results in a total of 185 thousand amputations per year. And this number is expected to double by the year 2050 due to increasing rates of diabetes and vascular disease. You may be thinking, how can diabetes cause amputations? Nerve damage or diabetic neuropathy can cause numbness. And if a person with a numb foot or a numb hand gets an injury and does not notice it, it could be seriously infected, which could then result in an amputation. About 80% of all these amputees will experience phantom limb pain, or PLP. PLP is a pain or sensation that occurs in an amputee's missing limb when nerve endings at the base of their amputation send signals to the brain that the missing limb is still there, causing pain. So how can we use VR to treat phantom limb pain? Currently, there are two types of treatment for phantom limb pain. Mirror therapy and visual image therapy. Mirror therapy was advanced in the early 90s. It consists of a patient putting their limb into a mirrored box, which then creates the illusion that the missing limb is still there. This tricks the motor cortex in the brain and eased pain and discomfort for many amputees. The second treatment is visual image therapy. Visual image therapy consists of the same process. Instead of using a mirrored box, patients would visualize their missing limb. This also eased pain and discomfort for many amputees. The idea was that over time, patients would retrain their brain and decrease their pain. Unfortunately, these treatments have only had moderate success and have no formal trials. But what if we could use VR instead of a mirrored box? We could bring up a better representation of the missing limb without having to rely on our imagination or a box. So if you were a patient, you'd put on VR glasses and have sensors at the base of your amputated limb. The sensors would send signals to your glasses which would then be translated into movement. So you could lift a glass or go walking or even run. In this virtual world, 
you're free to move around. Instead of being limited to a desk or a bed for mirror therapy. But as I was researching, I found that people are already doing this. In Sweden last year, a study was conducted with 14 amputees to measure the success of VR therapy for phantom limb pain. These patients went to a 12 two hour treatment and were asked to compare their pain before and after each treatment. About half of these patients reported a 50% decrease in their pain and reported the same evaluation six months later. Even though people are already pursuing VR therapy for phantom limb pain, there are some significant challenges. And I have some recommendations. So today, there are no formal trials for VR therapy. I would like these formal trials to include a control group, tracking multiple patient variables, different environments, and a larger pool of patients. The more information that we can gather, the more we can improve. The second challenge is cost. Today, VR may be a new, exciting type of technology, but it's just like when the first cell phone came out, it's very expensive. VR's most popular glasses, the Oculus Rift, cost around $8,000. There are some cheaper options out there, but they're not as high quality. If we want to use, pursue VR therapy for phantom limb pain, then VR companies need to achieve an economy of scale to drive market prices down. Before I close, everyone, meet Sally. Sally is working long hours at a manufacturing company in Detroit. She's tired and she's stressed, and then one day, it gets a lot worse. There's an accident, and Sally loses her hand in a machine malfunction. Surgery, lost wages, and now, constant phantom limb pain. VR may be an alluring cure for boredom, but what if it could be a cure for something greater? A cure for someone like Sally? This is my idea. Continuing to advance trials and affordability of VR so that it can solve real issues, like phantom limb pain. <laughs>